One of the most famous superheroes out there has to be Marvel's Captain America, but something that he and many others think is one of his biggest strengths might just be what makes him the most vulnerable of them all. Not just that, but he's thought of as the center of morality in the Marvel Universe. Does that limit him, or is that just a disguise for a much darker truth? Let's dive deeper into it, starting with Captain America's moral fortitude. For the longest time, the character was used as a piece of propaganda, both in the comics and the Marvel Universe. He's now directly equivalent to DC's Superman, maybe not in terms of his strength and superpowers, but certainly in his moral fortitude. But in the issue Captain America Sentinel of Liberty number 7, we find out that the hero has a critical weakness because of it. His morals ultimately stop him from being the best hero out there. In the recent comics continuity, the Captain discovered that an evil organization called the Outer Circle has secretly been pulling the entire world strings. The organization has a total of five super rich and powerful members, and all of them have been behind all the events that have taken place ever since the First World War. They were even behind the rescue of Garvilo Princip from his imminent imprisonment and death. Not just that, but it turns out that Bucky Barnes is part of it as well, since members of the Outer Circle assassinated his parents and further manipulated his life so he would join the military. They've been controlling his entire life. So the character takes out one of the members, and age Garvilo himself, and starts a revolution by taking his place. The captain also is visited by Namor, Atlantis's king, who saves the character's shield from the deep after a huge fight with Bucky in the issue just before this one. Namor says that the captain will never change, but that's his biggest flaw, especially addressing the difference between the captain and Bucky. He even says that the character hasn't changed much in an entire century of progress. Next up, Captain America is stuck in the past, and Marvel admits it. Since Bucky is more shadowy, Steve prefers to keep his patriotic image clean. Namor continues to say that the Captain simply can't go after his old friend into the depths. The Captain's biggest weakness, as even said by Daredevil, is that his reputation as a morally pure and clean superhero stops him from doing much. However, the same kind of superhero started losing popularity among fans since the Cold War started. Started. While most fans would say that that's what makes him Captain America, a man from an age that's past and reminds America about its past. But everyone else claims that the country was never as pure as the hero. Instead, he's a version of the country if you look through those rose colored glasses. Glasses that everyone seems to be looking through. At the comic's end, the character realizes that he will face the problem head on. He then teams up with characters such as Nick Fury, Black Widow, and a bunch more to put in end to the organization. But this doesn't change the fact that he would recruit others than do any of the dirty work himself. He's still the same person Namor fought in the 40s. While he may be loved because he pops into the present day as a man that's not in his time, he shouldn't stay this way forever. While the character is the Avengers leader and probably the most famous hero on Earth, Daredevil knows his weaknesses and proves he can beat him in every fight. Let's talk about him being the MCU's moral center. The hero is commonly thought of as the Marvel Universe's moral center, but recently, with the help of Ghost Rider, it was revealed that he's much more than just a morally correct person. He's genuine without any sin. The unique powers that Ghost Rider possesses makes him the best person to find out what a person is most guilty about just through their misdeed and then punish them by forcing them to face their sins. But in the comic Avengers Assemble Alpha Number 1, we find out that the captain is much more of a pinnacle than we previously ever could have imagined. Three of the main teams of Avengers were a part of the year-long Avengers storyline called 616 Avengers, the Multiversal Avengers, and the Prehistoric Avengers, heroes from the planet's past. The three teams had to work together and try to stop an infinite number of Mephistos from trying to take over the entire multiverse. Though at first, the three teams' temper gets the best of them. They engage in what's become a tradition over at Marvel. They all fight against one another until they ultimately join forces together. In the issue, the 616 Avengers are attacked by the prehistoric Avengers after a misunderstanding, leading to a clash between all three teams. During all of it, the captain is trying to stop the fighting and turns towards Ghost Rider and tells him to do his staring thing to see if they're not a threat. Additionally, Ghost Rider proves Captain America truly is without sin. Ghost Rider straight up refuses since he's seen the damage all of them have done. He's also using the stare on Namor already. 
but despite that, he doesn't try it on the captain. Let's not forget that Ghost Rider is more than just willing to put an end to his enemies, especially the 616 Avengers, and more than capable of using the power on Captain America. But why doesn't he use it then? Unless it simply wouldn't work on the character. While it's true that everyone has committed some kind of sin, the captain is always trying to do his best to help everyone out, which could be enough to nullify the effects of the stare. Despite a famous moment from the Punisher comics, a person's amount of regrets has nothing to do with the stare working. While Captain America has a lot of regrets, he could still be completely sin-free, leaving none for the stare to burn. This means he may be the purest hero in the entire Marvel Universe. Even Spider-Man has done some negative things, but Cap, on the other hand, has not, or at least not enough for the stare to work. Could it be that the only reason Ghost Rider refuses to use it on him is that he knows about it? Similarly, is Captain America a warmonger? While his character is your perfect good guy, his biggest flaw may be that his solution to all problems is punching his way through them. Despite his intentions, for all of it is pure and good, the character might find it hard to be happy and figure out what to do with himself if there wasn't a person or war to fight against. Whereas Tony Stark, the captain's exact opposite, tries to find peace through innovation, which is admittedly flawed sometimes. The captain represents older values that thought the war was the only solution. Could it be possible for him to be overly positive about life but still be a realist? The character knows that to get peace at times, we have to be ready for war. But as Odin said in the first Thor film, a good leader never looks towards war, but is always ready for it. But there's something that the captain wants even more than peace. He wants freedom, and he knows the difference between both. So no, he isn't necessarily a warmonger. Moving on, understanding the captain. To better understand the hero, we need to look at his counterpart, Iron Man, along with the ideologies and philosophies they have. While Cap's response to evil is to punch it in the face, Stark has always tried to fix all of the world's problems with the help of technology. Keeping in mind that Stark was the only one that knew what trouble awaited them on the other side of the portal from the first Avengers film, and he's the only person that saw that horrible vision from the Age of Ultron, he's more than just concerned about America's future, Stark wants to find peace for the entire world. On the other hand, Captain America is a man from a completely different era. He may not be stupid, but he still is super naive in some parts of his ideology after he's dropped into the modern world. In Age of Ultron, the Captain even says that everyone who's ever tried to win a war before it starts has always led to innocent people dying. Dying. Thus, the character isn't a warmonger, but he's just trying to do good in the world the only way he knows. Finally, Daredevil knows more of his weakness. While Matt Murdock is similar to the Captain, since both of them are within the same street level realm, allows them to thrive without a superpower. Also, his heightened sense gives him an edge. That, along with the character not having any limits to what he would do to get justice and peace, gives Captain America a huge disadvantage if the two fought with each other. Not just that, but the Captain's main weapon, his shield, may be another major factor in why Daredevil could easily defeat him. His senses allow him to hear noises from city blocks away, smell small scents that humans can't, and have a heightened sense of touch that lets him read normal books while just feeling the ink. His ninja training from the hand allows him to fight enemies without seeing them, and at times, even predict their moves. In Daredevil number 5, with art by Marco Cicchetto and writing by Chip Zdarsky, Daredevil looks into a prison break that makes John Walker respond. After a fight, only Walker and the hero are left standing. Daredevil then tells Walker that his twin clubs ricochet randomly, so they're super hard to deal with. He then says that a disc or shield would be super easy to rebound, and he's right. The captain's shield is his biggest weakness. With that, Marvel has outlined two major weaknesses of the Captain that make Daredevil the superior hero in every way. All he has to do is turn the lights off and play dirty, something the Captain would never do, and he's going to win. That's a wrap for this video. What are your thoughts about the hero? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.